Welcome to today's episode of the Arena Sports Show with me, your host, Helga Schutz. Well, we had a fantastic weekend of sport with the Schoke Chula Chula taking on African stars at a jam-packed Hage Geingob Stadium on Saturday. Lots of other soccer. We've also got futsal. Of course, the Rugby World Cup is um, nearing completion. Fantastic quarterfinal matches over the weekend. Much more of that later in the show. But let's start off with the soccer and Chula Chula and African Stars drew one all at a jam-packed Hage Geinigov Stadium on Saturday. Well, after the game, I spoke to Ndeke Hapulele of Eshoke Chula Chula and African Stars coach Prince Kofi. Let's take a look. <laughs> Fantastic goal. Tell us about that. I uh, know it's 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 not overwhelming. Uh, I think to be fair, the game to stars people always say stars are the best friends in the country. Uh, I, I strongly doubt that because our fan base came through for us. I think we even uh, we had more fans of ours and then the other fans in first class, they never gave up they never gave up believing that the thing that pushed the players was to keep the best up for them. Well, Ishoke Chula Chula's great run continued on Sunday when they beat Orlando Pirates 1-0. And after that game, I spoke to Chula Chula's coach, John Sikerete, as well as Pirates striker, Sadni Urikop. Let's hear what they had to say. Um, I'm really happy for the result. It's, it's our way. Um, this is what you don't really expect, but if you are prepared, you can get over it. So Pirates is a, a big team. Uh, with an uh, experienced coach who I do respect for that matter but then getting a win against uh, the well experienced team um, is something bonus for me with the trip is very very good for me Right, and yesterday you drew 1-1 against Stars so a very good weekend for you Very big one uh, for a relatively young team just recently promoted with uh, inexperienced players none of them is experienced and uh, they managed to draw with the defending champion and today they defeat one of uh, the long campaigners of the Namibian Premiership. So, what will you say? It's a, a, a good weekend for me. So, John, do you think you guys could challenge for the title? Uh, it's too early to say about that, but our aim is to stay in the league. That's what everybody uh, thought about uh, when you are just promoted. Your aim is to maintain where you can at least survive. But the... Uh, if the chance avail itself, why not? So you, you go for it. But for the moment, we are miles away from that. We are really trying to, to maintain where we can. We, and our supporters are pushing us up. I thought on the game, um, it was a really good game. Um, it was, to be honest, uh, it was a fair first half. Second half, we dominated. And, uh, but unfortunately, they scored first. And, you know, our players are not used to playing to play against this kind of crowd. So they were slightly intimidated and the emotions took over. So by the second half, we picked up. We picked our game up and um, unfortunately we gave our best. And we couldn't, we couldn't, it was, it was not really our game. Because we, we also hit that cross by twice. So it was, it was not our game. Yeah. It's 
said you, you missed the penalty there. How was that? Um, you know, I, I I wanted to go directly in the same time. But then, at the last minute, I changed my mind. And that's, that, that, that's how I got the best out of, uh, better out of me. And I, I missed it. Yeah. But definitely, it happened. It happened. It, it's part of the game. And uh, I know we have a bunch of young players. And I know that once we gel together, we will, we will, we will surprise uh, a whole lot of things come from next week onwards. Well, there's lots of more soccer over the weekend and the new lot leaders actually are FC Ongos. They beat Junam 3-0 on Friday and drew 0-0 against Life Fighters on Sunday. Well, after the Friday match, I spoke to Osvaldo Khamtsep. He's the captain of Ongos as well as the captain of Yunam, Ingero Katua. Let's hear what they had to say. Um, it was a good game, a uh, plan that was perfectly executed. I'd like to congratulate the technical team and the Ongos family and the players as well. Right, and now you joined top of the lot there with Komas Nampol. So what do you think of your start to the league? Uh, we actually had a great start, but um, you know, I always tell my boys, this shouldn't let like, get to our head. So we'll take it game by game and we'll see how we end. But the aim is obviously to, to, to fight for something this season. We brought in experienced players. Uh, uh, it's a great combination, a great mixture of experience and youth. So this time around, this is a serious thing. We want to compete, we want to fight. But like I said, we'll take it game by game. Right, and just tell us something about the spirit at your club. You mentioned youth and experience. What's the vibe like there? Oh, the vibe is crazy. Everybody's raring, everybody's buzzing, everybody's just there. You know, we have a top team, top players in each position. So it doesn't matter if one goes off, the next one that comes on is as good as the next uh, the guy that is playing. So um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited to see where we'll end this season. With the squad we have, this is the strongest team I've ever played for. Yes, you know, I don't know what's going on with the team. Our communication is very bad now, you know, we're not communicating very well. Made a few mistakes there, we conceded and everything. But from now on, I have nothing to say really. It's just we need to work harder and keep our heads up. Right. And Gero, uh, maybe let's quickly take a look at the Brave Warriors. You, of course, also playing for them. And the draw for AFCON took place last night, so what do you think of the draw? I think the draw, the draw is good, you know, uh, we are we are drawn with South Africa, we, we played with South Africa, so it's, it's, it's much easier to analyse them. We have Tunisia in the, in the group, in the FIFA World Cup group, poly, FIFA World Cup qualifiers group, we are going to play them in the FIFA World Cup qualifiers, I think we can test ourselves there for the AFCON too, and Mali, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right, and you of course would like to be in the squad. Um, is the competition going to be tough? Do you think you'll be in the squad? Hey, uh, I think if I if I push hard from here go, going forward, I think yeah, I'll have a, a chance. Interesting views there by Ngero Katua on the Brave Warriors AFCON draw. And we'll take a look at that draw a bit more in detail later in the program. But let's first take a look at the latest Premier League log as well as the weekend's results. Moving on to futsal news and quality made virtually sure of winning the men's Premier League title when they drew 4 all against their closest rivals Patriots on Saturday. With only two matches remaining they only need one point now to wrap up the league title. After that game I spoke to Graiano Risberg of Patriots and Eddie Solunga of quality. 
Let's hear what they had to say. Um, it was a very tough game, as we expected it to be, because um, there's a bit of a rivalry and it's, um, it will always get intense. It will, they will always bring their A game when they play against us and we plan to do the same. And the game was uh, very, very tight. Right, it was. I saw a bit heated arguments there. Um, what do you think of the ref's performance? I mean, the, it's a narrative that many teams are bringing in. But if you look at um, their captain, it's just a few players that keep on talking about the same stuff. But if you saw, many decisions could have gone either way. They could have gotten penalties and other fouls. We didn't get them. They could have gotten maybe a foul or two they didn't get. So it's part of the game that everybody might feel um, a bit um, unfavored when it comes to refereeing. Okay. Right, so Reno, your thoughts on the game? Um, I can allude to what the captain from Quality said. Um, it was an intensive game. It, it was expected because it's, it's always a clash between the top two teams of futsal. Um, in terms of the game, um, for us it's drop, uh, drop points. Um, I believe we could have taken the game. Um, we had it under control. We just brought quality into the game. Um, it's always a heated game, but um, I think the refs tried their best to control it um, as best as possible. Yes. Right, and this uh, draw, how does that leave the, the title race? Right now it's in uh, quality's hands. Um, it's drop points, as I said before. Um, so if they win the next game, they basically take the lead. Yeah. Well, let's move back to the AFCON draw. Namibia drawn in Group E against South Africa, Tunisia and Mali. Very interesting group there. Let's take a look at the complete draw for the 2023 AFCON finals, which will take place in the Ivory Coast in January next year. Let's move on to some rugby news and the Rugby World Cup came alight with some brilliant quarterfinal matches over the weekend. On Saturday, New Zealand beat the top ranked nation in the world, Ireland 28-24, while South Africa beat France 29-28 in an absolute thriller on Sunday night. So in the semi-finals next weekend, South Africa will take on England, while New Zealand will take on Argentina. Well, Namibia, of course, they're already back home. And um, on Saturday, I actually caught up with Namibian prop Des Seti, who tells us more about that red card that he got against Uruguay. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was quite an unfortunate event, uh, getting a red card in the last game. We are, we are really aiming, aiming to, win that, to win that last game. Um, the red card and the two yellow card really cost us in the last game. But uh, what, what, what can you say? It happens on the day. So it happened, yeah took it on the chin, uh, we just have to move forward from, from that, yeah. That's right, but you know, it's interesting, a lot of those, and actually some of the other red cards or yellow cards, very, very um, close decisions, you know, do you feel that they, they've been too strict, or how was that in your situation, could you have avoided it, do you think? Yeah, if you, if you, can, if you can see the, the, the comparison between the two World Cups, from 2019 to this World Cup, uh, we are currently on eight red cards already on this World Cup. While eight red, eight red cards were, were the full red cards for the 2019 World Cup. So they are really, they're really harsh on any any head head contact on it here. But I feel that I, I could have avoided it, uh, getting much lower. But uh, I mean, it was on the it was in the heat of the game, so it happened here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's, um, I know we all saw it was very difficult for you. You were in tears. But um, also tell us how was the response on social media? Was it difficult? No, social media was not really really difficult. I just feel myself that um, I, I let my team down. Really, the red card cost us in the final of the game. We had, we, we had such a good first half that, that, we, that we had such good points. And the red card playing for worth 13 men for almost 10 to 15 minutes was quite a difficult one for the team. So I really felt like 
um, I let my team down, but it's something that, that you must not uh, you let yourself feel down for all your life. If that happen, move on, you will get another chance in life. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, Namibia is still uh, not winning a game. But just tell us, how was the whole experience for you? Well, the whole experience was really nice for me, comparing the 2019 to this World Cup. But this was much more like a uh, whole rugby, rugby country. The whole fans enjoyed the rugby. You can feel the vibe in the game. Every every game was fully sold out. Even though the supporters were not from your country, you feel like they are from your country because they are wearing your, your, your national colors, supporting you all the way. So this was a really great experience for, 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 for me, yes. And the way forward, um, how many matches will you be banned? Um, currently I was banned three matches, still, still I don't know if it's now international matches or club games, but I'll see the way forward uh, next year, if we start with our um, Super Sport Challenge games or Curry Cup games, I will see how many games uh, I'll be banned, yes. Yeah. Okay, well all the best, Ted. Thank you very much, Alka. Well, congratulations to Day City as well as the whole Namibian team. You made us all proud. And that brings us to the end of today's show. But as usual, let's take a look at some of the weekend's top action photos. From me, it's goodbye.